Hi everybody, we're Mike and Jennifer Wenland, and we like to use our RV all year round, even in the winter time. In fact, winter camping is one of our favorite things to do, and in this video, we'll show you how you can also enjoy your RV in the winter time. We know this is how many of you want to spend your winter camping, somewhere on a warm Florida beach. Okay, we like that too. But we like to experience all parts of the country all year round. And we also like this kind of camping, surrounded by snow and deep in a wintry woods where we can snowshoe, gather around a raging campfire with other winter-loving friends, and enjoy the outdoors. If you'd like to do the same, listen up and we'll tell you how. There are three areas you need to address when winter camping. The first is staying warm. The second is water usage and using the bathroom. And the third is driving on snowy, icy roads. Let's start with the most important thing, staying warm. I remember the first time we camped in the wintertime. It got down to seven below zero that night. And I was feeling pretty smug. In fact, I said to Jennifer, hey, we should be proud of ourselves. But then I said, before you get too confident, look out the window. We've got neighbors, and they're camping in a tent. And it was their honeymoon, we discovered. But they said they were nice and comfy in there. They had a little space heater in that tent. Do you remember the coldest that we've ever camped in? It was minus 21 degrees in northern Minnesota. Oh, yeah. That was the year we were up there covering a dog side. And actually, that was the air temperature. The real temperature, when you factored in the wind chill, was 50 below zero. But we slept through the night as cozy as can be. We did. It's just as warm as our living room. Right now, obviously, we're inside the RV and outside it's 15 degrees and in here it's 73 degrees. Now, we have an Aldi heater and heated floors and Mike is even in his stocking feet. Besides our Aldi RV heater, we're running this little ceramic space heater. It costs about $40 and there's a great many different models like this to choose from. You can see the model we use on our gear page. We'll put a link to it in the description below. But the extra heat put out by this oscillating little heater really does help. However, you do want to be in a campsite that has electric hookups because prolonged use over time would really drain your batteries. This though we think is a great addition for any RV. Here's another important tip on staying warm with winter camping. It's called Reflectix. It's a great insulation. It's like a bubble wrap that you put inside your windows. It keeps the heat inside instead of escaping around the windows. You can buy Reflectix in big rolls at home improvement stores or on Amazon. Again, we'll link to it on our gear page. But we measure out each window and then cut our pieces to fit. It really helps. So staying warm inside the RV, that's no problem at all. But what about water usage? Well, because RVs in northern climates need to be winterized, you can't use running water like you normally can in the summer because, well, there's no water hookup down here. Nothing comes out. However, the secret to that is you bring bottled water for cooking and for washing and for flushing. Uh, and you can pour it right down the drain uh, into your gray water tank. However, here's the important thing. If you do that, make sure that you chase that with RV antifreeze. This is important. As much as you put in of water, you put in of antifreeze. And that'll keep those tanks and the plumbing from freezing up. The same thing goes for the bathroom. Yes, you can use the toilet, but follow it up with some antifreeze and then you just flush it. Now comes the third difference about driving an RV in the wintertime, and that has to do with operating it on snowy or icy roads. And here's my advice. If you would not drive your passenger car on that road, then don't drive your RV. But it has been my experience that you do not need snow tires or chains unless, as is in some states out west, they're required by law in certain mountainous areas. Now, I've driven in the worst winter weather you can imagine. I've even been caught in whiteouts. I've been amazed at how well my Roadtrek RV on the Sprinter chassis has performed. 
For proof, check out this video when we were hit by an unexpected blizzard on the shores of Lake Superior one winter. The snow is really coming down. There's, there's a considerable amount of snow on the ground, and yet this Sprinter, uh, this Sprinter chassis that Road Trek uses is just as solid. Uh, there's no sway, there's no sli sliding back and forth. Uh, I feel more secure driving this actually than in my, uh, my passenger car. So. But you do have to watch this road because it is really, uh, I can't even tell where the road is to tell you the truth. Fortunately, they have rumble strips built in and if I uh, stray over either side, you hear, you hear that? <laughs> That's, that means I'm, in, I'm, all, I'm going out of my lane, but you sure can't tell the lane with this uh, lake effect snow. The reason you camp in the winter is so that you can go out and play in the snow. And obviously, that requires some good warm clothing. And I particularly like these. They're hand and toe warmers. We buy a couple boxes every year. Take them out, shake them, pound them, get them activated. Have one for each glove, each hand's got their own. And then there's two in here for the boots, the shoes. Take those out, take the little sticky thing off the back, put it inside your boots. They, they work for several hours. You can buy larger ones that last just about the entire day. But these are awesome. Everybody needs these. We understand that winter camping isn't for everybody, but if you're healthy, fit, and have a sense of adventure, we invite you to give it a try. We are Mike and Jennifer Wendland. We want to thank you for watching, and please do us a favor and subscribe to our RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. We hope to see you out in the snow someday.